Yeah. I think we're trying to get a hold of Carl Ravage. Carl, are you there? I'm right here. How are you tonight? Good. Say hi to a couple of the Bowercrest boys. Happy to do it for you. Let's go. All right. Okay. Um... Wait, first, Jake Stimmel. Wish Jake Stimmel a, uh, a happy birthday. I understand you, uh, you know his dad. Not only do I know his dad, I think I know Jake, too. I think Jake visited us at ESPN. That's right. Yes. So happy birthday, Jake. Happy Thank birthday, Jake. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we have some questions for you. Go ahead. How did Bowercrest help start your, be, help start you getting on a TV career? How did Bowercrest help start me get on TV? Well, I'm not sure that it actually it was uh, was a, a way to get me on TV, but I know that a lot of things that that helped me on TV I got at Bowercrest. It uh, it it taught me all about how you can't do things on your own, that you need to be part of a team. I learned that at Bowercrest, and certainly being on television, while everybody sees the person that's on camera, there's a lot of people who work behind the scenes, which I know you guys are finding out about. Uh, so you're only as good as the, uh, as the team you play on, and ESPN has a very good team, and I learned that at Bowercrest, if you play as a, a team, you're going to be a lot better off than if you play as an individual. So uh, I think to answer your question, I don't know that Bowercrest helped me with my television career, but it gave me a lot of the uh, qualities that you need to succeed in television. Okay. Do thank you. you. Do, thank you. Do you know anything about the A-Rod high-stakes poker incident? Do I know anything about what? The A-Rod high stakes poker, the private poker game that A-Rod was in. Oh, uh, yeah, the A-Rod poker game. Um, I know that um, Major League Baseball is investigating it. I know they, they're they kind of tired of Alex's uh, his act, which sometimes goes against the things that they say. Uh, he's, been, he's been told not to not to participate in things like this before, and sometimes he kind of sticks his nose up at them and doesn't, uh, doesn't listen to everything they say. And I think when that happens, they get very upset about it. So I, I think that's the extent of it. I'm not sure that uh, Alex is going to have to be suspended or anything like that, but I do think that he's going he's gonna to have a meeting with the commissioner and really be told that uh, enough's enough. I think, that's, I think that's about where this is going to go. Why do the Yankees and other teams uh, seem to play better when Alex Rodriguez uh, is on the DL? <laughs> well, I, I don't know what the records are. I'm not sure that they actually succeed more without him than they do with him. Um, and the, the fact is, is that if you look at the Red Sox and Yankees now who are starting a series and they have the same record, uh, the Yankees are, are a better team with Alex on the team than they are with him hurt. I, don't, I think that's... I think that's uh, Red Sox fantasy to think that teams are better off without Alex playing. Texas, you know, when he left Texas, they also uh, rebuilt themselves and were a much better team, uh, not because he wasn't there, but because they had better players on the field than they did when Alex was there. Uh, Seattle was a very good team when he was there. Alex is one of the best players in baseball. That, uh, that frustrates a lot of people because I think a lot of people don't necessarily like it. Uh, what Alex stands for, but he's an excellent baseball player, and the Yankees, when he gets healthier, are a much more dangerous team with Alex Rodriguez in the lineup uh, than they are with Eduardo Nunez. Do you think his personality has anything to do with them struggling when he's in rather than when he's not? I think he changed his personality a little bit. I think this, uh, I think this poker game uh, investigation is sort of uh, reminding people of the old Alex. I think Alex, after he had his steroid admission press conference, uh, really changed the way that, that he acts in the clubhouse. I think that uh, if you talk to people within the Yankee organization, many of them will say that, uh, that it's really Alex Rodriguez who's the clubhouse leader and not somebody like Derek Jeter, that uh, a lot of the younger players gravitate towards Alex and not necessarily towards Derek. So I think on the uh, on the inside, uh, Alex has a has a great deal more respect than I think he does on the outside. I think the Yankee organization likes the direction that Alex is going, and I don't think they like to deal with this with this poker investigation. But his personality in that clubhouse, I think, has turned around. I'm pretty certain that the players uh, and the coaches really like him. How is it? Is it fun going to all these different stadiums for baseball tonight? Yeah, that is really cool. I really enjoy being at the stadiums. Um, 
you know, ESPN has done that for years with their college football show, College Game Day, and I was a little hesitant to think that it would work really well uh, going to the baseball stadiums. But uh, the fans are terrific. I think being there with them uh, certainly makes us feel like we're a bigger part of the game. It makes the Sunday night baseball game more of an event than it had been. Uh, baseball games are on TV so much that every game is now broadcast. You have to kind of make, we, we think you have to kind of make the Sunday night game a little bit more unique. And I think by having the baseball tonight crew there and seeing all the fans before and really after the game, uh, screaming and yelling and cheering for their team, uh, turns it into a bigger event. So I do enjoy it. The travel's a little tiring, but I do enjoy being there. And this Sunday will be at Fenway Park for the Yankees and Red Sox, and that's always going to be fun. What's your favorite stadium? If you had to pick one stadium to go to again as a fan, what would it be? As a fan to sit and watch a game? Or just like by like the looks or like its culture? I'll be honest with you. Uh, there's a lot of, there really are a lot of great stadiums in Major League Baseball now, and that wasn't always the case. But one of the things that, uh, that Commissioner Selig has done while he's been in charge has uh, completely updated Major League Baseball stadiums. And uh, let's see, this season I was in San Francisco, which is an incredible ballpark. Um, Atlanta's ballpark, of course, was built for the Olympics. That's a really cool ballpark. Colorado Coors Field is a, is a great ballpark. Pittsburgh has a beautiful ballpark. Um, you know, Yankee Stadium is new and City Field is new. It, it depends. If, you're, if I'm going for atmosphere, I'm going to either Fenway Park or uh, Wrigley Field, and since the Chicago Cubs are not playing really well this year, I'd say to be at a game at Fenway Park because they sell them out all the time is probably where I'd go, as long as I can get a good seat. Because not every seat is good at Fenway Park, but if I can get a good seat, I'd go to see Fenway Park and see the Red Sox play the Yankees. As a Yankees fan, I have to say I like the old Yankees stadium much more than the new one. Well, a lot of people that uh, are at camp would probably say that they like the old Boston Garden better than they like the new Boston Garden. So I, I, I understand what you're saying. What, what is ESPN sports culture like? What's the culture like at ESPN? Yeah. I think it's a lot like, uh, it's a lot like Camp Hourcrest. Uh, a lot of people who are uh, young at heart, who enjoy sports, who like, to, uh, who like to do well at what they're doing, who are a little competitive when it comes to the shows that they're on and want to make their shows the best. Um, it's, it's, a lot, uh, it's a lot like a, a college atmosphere because there's a lot of young people there and there's a lot of great energy there. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it is a college-like campus, um, and that's really the sports culture there. People, people work really hard and they work really long hours, but because it's a job that they like and they like sports, they deal with it. But uh, it's not... It's not untypical for somebody to go into work at six at night and not not leave until three in the morning, and you know people don't really complain about it because it's such a cool place to work. Hey, uh, speaking of a cool place uh, tonight, these two kids here, Carl, gave up watching one of the traditions at Bower Crest. What's the basketball game tonight? Sea Waiter game. The what? What is it? Sea Waiter game. The Sea Waiter game. Do you do you remember that, Carl? I'll be honest with you. I, I, when I was there. There was not a CI waiter game when I was there. The, the, the most important basketball game to watch was the uh, senior A hoop basketball game in Color War. We never had a we never had a CI waiter game. Um, and I was a waiter, and then I was a, and then I was an environmental engineer, which I don't even think they have anymore. Uh, and then I was a CIT. So we we never got a chance to compete against the, the waiters that way. But I know my son Sam is up there. Uh, and he spoke about it, how, how great it was. So I'm sure it's awesome. I, I wish I were there. Uh, being in the rec hall is one of the great places. Uh, those games are as intense as any games that I've been to. Um, and I've been to a lot of really intense games. I've been to all the World Series games since 1995. And I know that being inside that rec hall, sweating and screaming and yelling, is about as good an environment as I've ever been in. I, I wish I could see it. I know it's a great game. Well, they, uh, these two kids sacrificed watching it so that they could talk with you, and that just gives you the little uh, testimony of the dedication that these kids have had uh, to my program uh, at Young Broadcasters. And actually, uh, Carl, you're going to meet another one on Sunday night. Look for a kid named Ben Lewis on Sunday night. Uh, he's, a, he's the son of Elisa Tanzer. Are you familiar with that woman? Yeah, I am. In fact, I emailed her. I know I'm going to meet Ben Sunday night, and Lisa, Lisa and I go back uh, to the days when I was going to Bowercrest, and uh, she lived in our neighborhood in Needham. In fact, 
When I was at Barrowcrest, there was a hundred different Ravitches there, and one of the Ravitches uh, family lived on the same street as Lisa. So yeah, I know Lisa very well, and I'm looking forward to seeing Ben. I heard Ben is uh, is doing a good job, just like the boys that are there tonight who are doing a great job. Yeah. And, he anchored but, our he anchored one hour of television live today at, at our camp, and uh, he's a great kid. And uh, the fact that you know the the mom, and uh, I'm sure you'll meet Harmon too, the dad, uh, is a great thing. And, and Carl, just thank you so much for uh, supporting not only Bowercrest, but uh, my whole Young Broadcasters program this whole year. Uh, you interviewed Alex, Alex Reamer interviewed you earlier this year for one of our programs that aired on Nesson, and uh, you're a class act, man. Well, Jimmy, I appreciate that, and, uh, and I know what you're doing is a great thing. I didn't start getting into broadcasting until I went to college, so... Uh, ben and the boys that are up there at Bowercrest are way ahead of the game. It's a, it's a great field, and it's a lot of fun. And make sure, boys, that you, uh, you, you do the things behind the camera as well as in front of the camera because when you go out and you want to get the job in this field, you need to be able to do everything when you start. So good luck to you guys, and, uh, and I'm, I'll be up at the crest on Monday morning. Looking forward to seeing everybody. All right. Thanks for joining us, Carl. Bye. You're very welcome, guys. Have a great rest of your summer. Thanks, Carl. That was great. Hey, a nice job.